Hey there, voters. I'm Stacey Hanrahan, and welcome to Monday's episode of Voters TV. First up, our captain's caption photo was provided by Florence Gross. We'll reveal the caption of the day at the end of the show. Now let's see what's splashing around in nautical news. It seems that stingrays have been receiving a bad reputation lately, and the recent death of a Michigan woman due to a freak collision with a stingray hasn't made the fish any more lovable in the eyes of the public. Last month, a woman on a boat in the Florida Keys died when a spotted eagle ray jumped out of the water and struck her in the face, fracturing her skull. The 75-pound ray collided with the woman as the boat she rode in traveled at 25 miles per hour. The impact also killed the ray. Ray encounters are rare but do occur. Two years ago, a man was critically injured when a stingray jumped into his boat off the South Florida coast and stung him in the heart. He miraculously survived. But crocodile hunter Steve Irwin wasn't as lucky when his heart was pierced by a stingray's barb while swimming in shallow waters off Australia's Great Barrier Reef. All these incidents paint the picture that stingrays are incredibly dangerous. But the truth is, they are not aggressive and only use their venomous stinger for defense. In fact, when threatened, a stingray's primary reaction is to swim away. Spotted eagle rays can weigh up to 500 pounds and have a wingspan as wide as 10 feet. They're absolutely breathtaking to see in the wild, and I always consider myself lucky to see one breach. Stingrays occasionally jump out of the water to escape predators, remove parasites, or give birth. Accidents involving stingrays and humans are extremely rare, and while these collisions are tragic and certainly sadden me, they will not diminish my respect for these graceful creatures. Coming up in Ship Shape, imagine a barnacle-free boat. I think everyone would agree with me that boating is fun, but there are some aspects of owning a boat that aren't fun. For example, scrubbing barnacles off your boat's hull might be good exercise, but I wouldn't exactly call it a good time. And opening your wallet to pay for an expensive bottom paint job has never been my idea of a party. So, when I came across a product that promised to eliminate virtually all barnacle growth and the need to ever bottom paint, I thought, now that's a cause for celebration. Boat bunkers in water mooring stations protect a boat below the waterline by isolating the water it sits in from the surrounding water. The idea is to cut off oxygen and food sources that allow marine life to grow. With a boat bunker, your vessel sits in a swimming pool-like environment, safe from barnacles and other fouling organisms. And if your boat is going to be moored for an extended period of time, simply add an environmentally friendly water treatment agent to prevent weed and algae growth. Boat bunkers come in a variety of shapes and sizes to accommodate anything from a jet ski to a 50-foot yacht. They are much cheaper than a lift, and since they are not permanent, can be moved whenever needed. These mooring stations can be tied to a dock, pier, or even a mooring buoy. Just like a bunker on land is an underground shelter, a boat bunker is an underwater shelter for your vessel. To learn more on these in-water mooring stations, including specifics on their design, go to www.boatbunkers.com. Next up in Off the Hook, are you doing your part to save the fish? To ensure future generations will be able to enjoy fishing as much as we do, it is important for us to protect the fish population today. That's why more and more anglers are choosing to practice catch and release. If you release a fish that doesn't survive, what's the point? Saltwater Sportsman Magazine's George Poveromo recently wrote an article entitled Six Ways to Save Fish. Make releases count by giving your catch a fighting chance. George's first tip is to use circle hooks. Self-setting circles tend to hook fish in the jaw without causing damage to the gut and throat. 
Once you've made your catch, try to keep it in the water during the release process. George points out that taking a fish out of the water is like someone holding your head underwater after running a lap around the block. That makes sense. If you must remove your catch from the water, be sure not to hold it vertically. Gravity can cause internal damage, basically ensuring the fish will not survive after release. Make sure to support the entire length of the fish when out of the water. Remove the hook quickly, yet safely. Often the best way is with the use of a hook removal tool, such as the ARC dehooker. These tools allow you to keep the fish in the water during hook removal. George has many more tips on saving fish. To read his entire article, pick up a copy of Saltwater Sportsman Magazine's April issue and check out www.saltwatersportsman.com. Now it's time to reveal Stacy's TheBoaters.com Celebrity Profile Pick of the Day, which is... Captain Jonathan Walden and his future Sweden yacht sailboat, Believe. Jonathan is an acoustic folk rock musician who can't get enough of being on the water. Whether he's whitewater rafting or sea kayaking, Jonathan is a happy man. Maybe it's because his ancestors were from Scotland. Welcome to the boaters and congrats on your sea celebrity status. And finally today, the captain's caption of the day is... No, that's okay. I got it. Submitted by Diver Dennis. And that'll do it for this episode of The Boaters TV. See you back here on Wednesday.